Okay, it's time to get started with 2020 Johnson Creek Watershed Council's annual celebration. Thank you all for attending. My name is Daniel Newberry, and I have the honor of being the council's executive director. This is the time each year for us to come together to reflect on and celebrate the accomplishments that all of us have realized in restoring Johnson Creek and building community. So we usually hold this event in late May, but we've postponed hoping we would be able to hold an in-person event. Sadly, we're not able to do that this year, but we don't wanna let an entire year go by. So we're holding this event virtually. And we're hoping that this will allow some people um, who live further afield to uh, be able to attend when they wouldn't normally be able to. So welcome everyone. 2020 is the 21st, 25th anniversary of the Johnson Creek Watershed Council, an entire quarter century. Some of our volunteers were not even born then. And I'd like to say a special thank you tonight to the council co-founder, Walt Minkeski, who has been active for 25 years and more and currently serves as the chair of our advisory board. You've probably noticed the special 25th anniversary logo, which you will see and part of our screen right now. A uh, big thank you to Russ Stahl and to Marty Ehrman, both who worked on designing this logo. So before we get started tonight, I just wanna do a few housekeeping things since although I'm sure most of you have been on Zoom before, there are a few different things with Zoom webinar. One of the big things you'll notice is that you don't, uh, you don't see everybody. Um, there are little boxes on the screen. Um, Zoom webinar has a feature where uh, there's some people who are panelists who will have speaking roles and you'll see their, their screens, um, but you won't see everybody else's. And um, you can see people in either gallery view or speaker view. Um, and what that means is if you're in gallery view, everybody's box appears the same size, but if you're in speaker view, the person speaking will appear larger. Um, I would encourage you to do that as um, you'll be able to see the speaker better. And to do that, you just move your cursor a little bit. And in the upper right corner of your screen, you'll see a little, the little word view. If you click on that, you'll see some options, speaker view or gallery view. So I recommend um, just clicking on speaker view. In a few minutes, um, we'll be conducting a poll. Um, I think in order to try to make this as interactive as possible, one of the things we'd like to do is share with you um, how the people who are part of the webinar today and hopefully also through Facebook Live, since we have quite a few people uh, viewing us through Facebook Live, uh, get to see how you have been connected with the Watershed Council. And you'll be able to submit your answers in a pop-up box and the results will be displayed on the screen. So I'm gonna launch the poll right now. Um, you should see a poll on your screen and at the top it says, who is attending tonight? And the question is, we'd like to know who's joining us tonight. What is your connection to the Johnson Creek Watershed Council and its multiple choice? And I see a lot of you have already started filling it in. And the fun thing about Zoom webinar polls is as people sign in, you can see what percentage of the people are answering the different, um, the different options here. We've got eight different options. And... Um, this is really great. I'm gonna, we're gonna keep it going for just over a full minute. Um, Facebook users, if you would like to participate, you can't do that as directly, but I'll see about trying to get that information. Um, let's see what we've got here. Have things come in. Okay. So we're just about finished. I see we've got uh, 40 people of the participants have decided to um, participate. So let's see, 
Of the people that are signed in right now through Zoom webinar, it says here, oh, we've got somebody else is continuing to, to try here. This is great. So we've got 38% says I'm a current or past board member. 43% says I have volunteered at a restoration event. 18% community science volunteers. 18% I work for an agency that partners with the council. 8% I work for a community organization that partners with the council. 23% I am a friend or family member of a volunteer partner organization staff or board. So great, thank you family members for joining in. 5% uh, say I am a current or past uh, intern. And let's see, 20% I am a current or past staff member. So thank you everybody, this is great. Um, I'm going to end the poll here and um, you can probably see the final results up on the screen. So I'm going to click out of that and just uh, double check here. Um, see if we have anything coming in on Facebook. When that comes in, I will let you know. But let's, um, let's keep moving forward. I am seeing a few things coming in. Um, um, let's see, we've, we've got some people saying they've got family members watching with them. And uh, I, I see one comment from our board member, Charlotte Trowbridge. I bet you one of her family members is her brand new baby, who's probably just a week or two old. So anyway, let's, uh, Let's keep going here. We've got a lot to go through tonight. Um, at this point, I would like to say a special thank you to our um, business sponsors because we rely on uh, support, financial support from a lot of different sources to keep the watershed going. And one of them is the business community, business and, and government every year uh, give sponsorships for this event. So what I would like to do at this point is I would like to acknowledge those sponsors. And I've got um, something coming up right now. Um, our coho level sponsor, that's our highest level of sponsorship. Uh, PCC Structurals, they are a returning sponsor. Thank you very much. At the Lamprey level, we have returning sponsors, Fred Meyer, Biohabitats, Walker Emulsions, Wolf Water Resources, and City of Portland Bureau of Environmental Services. And BES is new this year, so welcome. And at the Steelhead sponsor level, returning sponsors are Geoengineers, Interflu, City of Gresham, Clackamas Water Environment Services, and we'd like to say a special welcome to brand new sponsor, Crawley LLP. So thank you all for the business, business sponsorships. Uh, I do wanna say that we also rely on individual donors. So I wanted to put up on the screen right now, a couple of different ways people can donate. We would love to have you donate tonight to help strengthen Johnson Creek Watershed Council for the next 25 years of our existence. As you can see on the screen, one of the ways is jcwc.org slash donate. That's through our website. Or you can text the word donate to 503-386-9883. I'm gonna put this up later on in the program, but just wanted to let you know there are a couple ways that you can donate tonight very easily. So we're gonna continue on with our program tonight. Our Watershed Council really is a community. Like many nonprofits, we have a board and a staff, um, 16 board members and seven staff members uh, to be precise, but we also have an extraordinary number of volunteers. In 2019, we had nearly 3000 volunteer signups, which is a record and in the past five years, we've more than doubled the number of people that sign up to volunteer. And I think that really speaks to people's 
real desire in today's world to want to be con to contribute to the environment and especially the environment near where they live and work. We worked also last year with more than 15 public agencies and more than 25 community groups and more than 125 individuals donated financially. Thank you to every one of you because it really does take the entire community to restore an urban stream. And unlike most urban creeks in the Northwest, Johnson Creek has active runs of coho and Chinook salmon, of steelhead trout and a Pacific lamprey. So, I now have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker. Uh, and the keynote speaker is Robin Cody. Robin graduated from Estacada High School and Yale University, two schools on opposite coasts of the United States. And Robin is an author, he writes books. His book, Ricochet River, is a coming of age novel set in a mill town on a river very much like the Clackamas. His book, Voyage of a Summer Sun, is the winner of the 1995 Oregon Book Award. It's about the Columbia River as seen from a canoe over 82 days from the headwaters of Astoria. Both books made the State of Oregon Library's recent list of 150 best of Oregon books. Says the writer Brian Doyle of Robin Cody. Trust me, folks, Robin is one of the great story catchers and storytellers who ever hatched in the great Northwest. In addition, Robin lives in the Johnson Creek watershed. He is our neighbor. He lives in Reed Canyon at the headwaters of Crystal Springs. He's also not new to JCWC. He was part of our annual salmon summit back around 1999. And I'd like everyone to please welcome Robin Cody. So let's get Robin unmuted here. Okay, let's see. Just hold on a sec, we'll see what we can do here. Um, going to Okay, Robin, you should be able to unmute and start your video now. Let's give it another try. Always works this way with Zoom and the practice that worked fine. Um, Let's try to see what we can do here. Please hang on here. We're, we're trying to work this out. Hmm. Okay, I think we might want to try go to a different part of our program and we'll come back to the keynote speech in just a minute. Not sure what's going on here. But why don't we why don't we start off uh, next with the Riffle Awards? Um, Courtney, what do you say? Let's switch things around and do that. And I, while you're doing that, I will see if we can figure out what's going on with the, um, the technical difficulties here with trying to get um, Robin's video back online here. Yeah, I, can I make a different suggestion perhaps? Go ahead. Uh, do you think we could do some staff intros? 
Uh, actually, I need to have you take the mic here so that I can troubleshoot while you're speaking. Okay. So if you could, if you oh, could I go see. ahead. I see. I see. <laughs> go ahead and do the riffle awards. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I'll see what we can do. Okay, Doug. Cool. Well, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Courtney Beckel. I'm the volunteer program manager. Um, and it is my pleasure to present the Riffle Awards tonight. Uh, so Riffle Award winners. I hope you're almost ready because we're going to start to play with your video pretty soon here too. Um, so every year, the Riffle Awards are presented to individuals and groups whose actions in the watershed best exemplify our mission to promote restorations and stewardship of a healthy Johnson Creek watershed, um, both using science and community engagement. So there are five categories of the Riffle Award, and those categories are community partner, school partner, agency partner, business partner, and we have a special Ernie Francisco Award for an individual who's left an indelible mark on the council for the year. So let me start to share my presentation here. So the first award that we're going to be presenting tonight is our agency partner. And the winner goes to, drum roll please, <laughs> the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality. So the EQ has been a dedicated partner of the Johnson Creek Watershed Council for many years. And they've been active members of the Inner Jurisdictional Committee for Johnson Creek. Tonight, Andrea Motsky is going to be accepting this award. Um, they've provided funding for research and restoration projects in the watershed through grants and other means and have been an important part of providing information to the watershed community on local air and water quality issues. So Andrea, I'll hand it over to you if you have a couple of words you'd like to share. Sure. Can, can you hear me okay, Courtney? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Can you see me at all or? I can see you. Okay, I couldn't tell. <laughs> um, well, I thank you, Courtney, and thank you to Daniel and the Johnson Creek Watershed Council for nominating the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality for the Riffle Award. Um, I know there's a, a lot of staff at DEQ who have done a lot of great work with the Watershed Council, so I feel pretty honored to accept this award on behalf of the agency. Um, I'm also grateful to our DEQ leadership that understands the importance of collaborative relationships with citizen organizations like the Johnson Creek Watershed Council. I think this collaboration has supported mutual efforts to provide important information to the public, such as potential uh, impacts to water, air, and land from all the different activities going on in this really complex watershed with the intersection between different urban and rural communities. Um, also, you know, on a personal side, my family lives in the Johnson Creek Watershed Council, so, uh, or the watershed, and so, you know, kind of taking off my regulatory hat for a, a moment here. I think I got it, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> This organization and the incredible work that they do really you know, has a special place in my heart. So thank you again to Daniel and the Johnson Creek Watershed Council for this agency award. It really means a lot. Thank you, Andrea. You're welcome. Um, so it looks like we have had some success with Robin, but I think we're just going to continue on here. So we're, we're excited to hear from you soon, Robin. Um, so our next award is going to our business partner. And the winner is Sound Native Plants. And accepting this award is Brendan Addis. 
Sound Native Plants is a business that has strong ties with the council. Not only have staff members worked at Sound Native in the past, but many of our interns have gone on to work for SMP as well. One of our first Creek crew leaders and past Sound Native Plants employee, Sarah Walker, has organized many SMP crews for volunteer events over the years. And as a side note, as a result of our ongoing relationship, the owner asked their crew if there was an organization that they'd like to donate to, and they lovingly chose us. We're very honored by that. Um, Brendan, would you like to share a few words tonight with us? I can. I was thinking I'd have a little bit more time, but I guess we're all <laughs> <laughs> jumping into it. Can you hear me all right, sounds like? Yep, yep, we can hear you. All righty, I have my video coming through for you. Beautifully. Okay, I, I see that it seems whoever's speaking can't see themselves. Well, uh, I would just like to say on behalf of Ben, Chad, myself, everybody at SMP, thank you guys for the Riffle Award. Uh, we've enjoyed working on the same mission as Johnson Creek Watershed Council for many years um, as, a, as a business. I think one of the main things that we try to look for is people who have a personal dedication to bettering the local environment. And I think because of that, we end up seeing a lot of familiar faces just working for different acronyms from time to time. And uh, I think much like the ecosystems we work with, there's a little bit of a positive feedback going on with all the individuals involved. Uh, you mentioned Sarah being one of the early Creek crew leaders, and I started trying to think of the names of everybody we've had over the years, and Jacob, James, Dakota, Alexio, Claire, Emily, uh, more than I have time to speak today, uh, listing everybody off. So this is really about the individuals that make both our company happen and the work at Johnson Creek. So we really appreciate that. And uh, we look forward to many more years of, of working with you guys on the same mission. So thank you very much. Uh, for the honor, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Brendan. All righty, so our next award is going to be for our community group partner. And that community group partner is Leaf Garden Friends. And accepting this award is Joanne Brilakis. Hi, Courtney. Do you have a couple of words that you'd like to share with us today? I would love to. First of all, I want to say thank you. Um, I'm oh, oh, Joanne. Yeah. I'm so sorry. What? A couple. Of, I I have like all this stuff I want to say about you. Can I do that for <laughs> <Yeah>. you, Doug? <laughs> yep, go for it. Oh, good. Oh, good. Great. <laughs> it's on the next page here. So, Joanne is amazing. Joanne and the Leach Garden Friends have been a huge and integral part of our work for the past few years. Joanne's depth of knowledge, her enthusiasm, vulnerability, and care is unmatched. And the success of our joint project that we work on together, many of our joint projects, um, is due to her work and dedication. Um, a major joint project that we work on together is the Back Five Restoration Project which focuses on restoration, mindfulness, and exploring science, technology, engineering, and math careers. This project is in partnership with three BIPOC-led community groups who each have an environmental focus. And we've also hosted multiple bilingual events at LEACH with Joanne's support. In addition, we've had lots of school, community organization, and weekend volunteer events at the Garden. Joanne and the entire staff um, have supported our events, and we really love our special partnership. So I'd like to hand it over to Joanne. Okay, embarrassed. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I want to, I'm accepting this award on the part of our, um, of Leach Botanical Garden and Leach Garden Friends, the nonprofit that runs it. Everyone there has an oar in the water uh, working with Johnson Creek and our other partners in the project. Our missions mesh so well. You can imagine how excited we were when we, when they joined us, I'd like to name the other partners, uh, the Blueprint Foundation, Wisdom of the Elders, African Youth Community Organization, David Douglas High School, and also Lent K-8. through We've put in over 4,000 hours out there. We couldn't do it without Johnson Creek Watershed Council and both their energy and their support and their advice. So 
really excited to be in uh, that kind of relationship with them. Um, the students have come out, there's five acres that we're restoring. The students come out and they've learned how to do plant transects. They've learned geology, they've learned about amphibians, they've got in the creek and found eel and native mussels and um, sign riffles, so to speak, where salmon might breed. So it's been a big adventure for them. Also um, pollinators, community science projects, um, traditional ecological knowledge that they learned from Wisdom of the Elders. They even made cordage out of stinging nettles. So um, I feel like through this project, what we're doing is not just reflecting our community, but being of our community. And so I want to thank everybody that's a part of it. It's a true coalition and it's reaching out to other members of the community so that um, Lent Youth Initiative has come and worked with us and really cool things are happening like um, uh, the um, Eco Trusts Green Workforce Academy hasn't been invited to the site by Wisdom of the Elders. They've worked together. Wisdom of the Elders has filmed Blueprint Foundation and ICO students doing plant transects as a way to show other students how it's done. So it's just really blossoming and I'm really proud to be part of it and want to thank the um, Johns Creek Watershed Council for joining us and helping us make it happen. And that's it. Thanks, Joanne. Sure. What a project. <clears throat> um, All righty, so our next award is going to our school partner. And the winner is David Douglas High School's Logan Markhart. So we recently started our partnership. Hey, Logan. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Good. Nice. Um, so we recently started our partnership with David Douglas High School career technical education class focusing on natural resources in uh, September 2019, so last year, on the Back 5 Leach project that Joanne was just talking about. Um, they've been sending a class every month to the site or, you know, until COVID uh, shut that down. Um, and they've been participating in numerous activities um, and environmental education opportunities. They're currently our most consistent school partner. Um, and they haven't received an award from us since 2007. The students are super cool and they're eager to learn and Logan does an amazing job keeping the students engaged and interested. They even participated in a machete workshop run by JCWC staff. And not only did it go well, but no injuries occurred. So that was a highlight. This partnership is projected to continue for several more years, and it's already becoming a deep relationship with the Johnson Creek Watershed Council. So, Logan, do you have some words that you'd like to share with us tonight? Yeah, thank you guys um, for the award and the opportunity. It's been really cool to get the kids out um, into a natural area that's in their backyard and teach them some stewardship and kind of give them ownership of some space that they may not have had before. Um, really want to thank Joanne um, at Leach for kind of reaching out and fostering the partnership and Courtney, Noah and Drew for coming out and helping us um, with the students as we come out there and helping to teach them and show them some of the careers and some of the cool things you can do outside. And we're looking forward to when all this craziness is done, getting back out there and keep on working on that back five with you guys. So thank you. Thank you, Logan. That's great. So, the moment you've all been waiting for, the last award of the night is our Ernie Francisco Award. And this is another name for Volunteer of the Year. This award was named for the late Ernie Francisco, who was one of the council's founders and lived along Johnson Creek by Leach Botanical Garden. Drum roll, please. The winner of the Ernie Francisco Volunteer of the, of the Year Award goes to Jeffrey Lee. So Jeffrey Lee 
started volunteering with us in 2017 at our mushroom and lichen eco blitz. He took part in lots of restoration events over the years. He joined as a watershed engagement intern with us in 2019. And not only has he brought the council to new levels of efficiency and organization through his internship, but he also helped us through a time of need and jumped on board um, to manage our community science program last summer. One fun fact about Jeffrey, he is one of Portland's top iNaturalist observers, and he's photographed 614 species in the Portland metro area alone. Jeffrey's a brilliant, kind man with a special place in the hearts of all of us on staff. Jeffrey, would you like to share a few words with us tonight? Hi, Courtney, this is Daniel again. Uh, Jeffrey is not signed on to the, to the webinar at this point. I'm going to ask to see if potentially he is signed in on Facebook. Sure. Um, but he is registered to on the for the webinar, but he's just not signed in at the moment. Okay, well, we'll hold tight for a sec. Okay, just uh, want to check. Um, and I'm hearing he's not on Facebook. So um, Jeffrey's, like you said, Courtney, he's been really great with the Watershed Council doing a lot of different things. Unfortunately, he's not uh, signed on right now. So thank you, Courtney. Um, I think we're now ready for our keynote speech. Um, want to apologize to everybody for that technical snafu. Um, we are we are ready to go here, Courtney. If you could unshare your screen, um, Robin. Um, I would like to. I think we're ready to. Um, have you go go ahead. So Robin, Cody, uh, welcome again, and we look forward to hearing your keynote speech. Can you hear me right now? Yes, we can. Uh, we can hear you, but cannot see you at the moment. Okay, I will start video. Perfect. There you go. We got you. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, thank you, Daniel, for the nice uh, introduction back there. Um, and if there was a problem there, I mean, there was a problem there, uh, chances are it's my fault. So you don't have to apologize for that. Um, and here we go. Sometimes, you know, a writer just makes a story up, like Wade Curran on Ricochet River. There's no such person, no river by that name. So I'll begin here with a very brief true story. A couple of weeks ago, I was chopping firewood for my sister up in Welch's. And on the drive back home, I knew there was construction, road work on Powell. Right? So I took a left turn just past Gresham to head on over toward Foster Road and the way home. Johnson Creek said the sign before I caught across the stream. And I know we're working on fish passage, clearing culverts and such. I'd been at this place many times before by bicycle without thinking much at all about removing immigration barriers for our brothers, the fish. But suddenly the whole idea of it, we're inviting adult steelhead to come this far upstream to spawn steelhead families in Gresham of all places, struck me as extraordinary. And it is. I'm thinking, I'll be darned. Wake up, rubble. That's the mark of a thriving ecosystem. It's what we do here. We do restoration. 
25 years ago, Johnson Creek was on life support. Who knew that today we'd, we'd have adult Chinook and Silvers, not to mention cutthroat trout returning from the ocean through the city of Portland's first ever salmon sanctuary that's on the Crystal Springs branch of the watershed and for the fish to continue upstream into Reed Canyon. Wow. Fish, birds, crawdads, and all the even smaller creatures, we have all the best features of a grown river, except the dams. Okay, transportation. I can't navigate Johnson Creek, but we have trillions, trillions, I said. Boy, what a treasure, this place. Donna and I live on the north side of Reed Canyon where nature just spills into our urban lap. People here lock up their cats and small dogs because everyone has seen a coyote on the street. Me, I'm all for the coyote. Life is hard in the, in the West, you know, as it should be. Early this spring, here on the property, we hosted a Western screech owl in our backyard ancient apple tree. Pretty soon after this discovering that one, it's a male who flew away at night into the canyon. Um, pretty soon we had two screech owls. Oh my gosh, this we thought could be a dramatic development. The whole neighborhood was on pins and needles. And sure enough, come June and all the foliage on the tree, we could no longer see the place of the owls. Uh, but here came eager little chirps to be heard coming from a high cavity in this old fashioned, old time. It's over a hundred and a hundred years old. Uh, Apple tree. I forgot the name of the. I forgot the name of the apple. Excuse me. Uh, and uh, then the tree itself was a celebrity, uh, and we were the envy of the neighborhood. Now I'm going to flip the uh, flip my notes here to get a different page. Robin, while you do that, this is Daniel. Could you move your screen down a little bit? We could only see about half of your face. Oh. There, perfect, perfect. Oh. Thank you, Thank you and sorry for the interruption. Okay. Hey, it's fun to, <laughs> it's fun to see all you, all you uh, Johnson, uh, Johnson Creek keepers uh, is what I was, expecting on this, but all I can see is my own face, which is unnerving, let's say. But here we go again. Where else but in Portland do the best intentions of nature and civilization come braided so close together? I'm going to repeat that because I like it. <laughs> Where else but here in Portland 
to the best intentions of nature and civilization come graded so closely together. Restoration, I firmly believe, is reciprocal. As we take care of the watershed, the watershed lifts us. A stream of fresh water on its way to the ocean, seasonally replenished, is good for the mental and spiritual health of anyone paying attention. Or maybe not for everybody, but when the black dog comes to visit me, a walk around and around the canyon with an eight-year-old is therapy. She calls it the forest, which rings a bell to me. This little river is our legacy too. Today, it seems likely to survive the impact of humans. And I've come to think of the people I've worked with at Creekside and sometimes shin deep in the creek as a favored subspecies of mankind connected to the land and with each other. Now I could go on and on about this, uh, but the administration gave me the meager a lot of time uh, and there's a lot of celebration to come up this evening. But first and finally, I'll just say, and this is a, this is a fantasy, about the people of JCWC, from its leadership to us worker bees. When I'm in charge of the world and can choose only one subset of humankind to survive, I will pick first Librarians. What, you thought river keepers? Close, that's close. And I feel happy for the opportunity to have spoken with you tonight. Big fan of Johnson Creek Watershed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robin. Thank you very much. We're very honored to have you speak as our keynote speaker. I'm just sorry that we weren't able to do this event this year in person because I definitely empathize with that feeling of talking into the screen, knowing you're talking to other people, but not being able to see them. So yeah. I, I definitely empathize with you on that. So uh, Courtney, a uh, little more uh, unscripted stuff. Jeffrey Lee has now joined. Um, Jeffrey, I'm just going to give you a little advance warning. Uh, because of technical difficulties, we did the Riffle Awards earlier. And so we just now finished the keynote speech. So um, I've now promoted you to panelist. And um, Courtney, why don't you take over at this point and finish, we'll finish the Riffle Award. Hi, Jeffrey. Glad you could make it. Um, well, so you're the only one who hasn't heard my introduction for you, I think, unless you were hearing me from somewhere else. But we um, we just wanted to maybe let's let's just do a little a quick little repeat. Dun, 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 and the winner is. <laughs> The winner is of the Ernie Francisco Volunteer of the Year, Jeffrey Lee. <laughs> Do you have a few words that you'd like to share with us, Jeffrey? Yeah, 
Yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah, first off, uh, sorry, I was actually in traffic, but I'm here now. Um, first off, I just wanted to give like a big thank you to the council. Um, what I've learned from all the amazing staff this past year has been really invaluable to my growth as a professional and as a community advocate. Um, so just real quick, much of my time has been spent um, as a as a volunteer, a lot of my time was spent with uh, being a watershed wide engagement intern for the past year, um, where I became like really like really familiar with planning events, uh, soliciting donations, communicating uh, with media, and planting trees and removing invasives. And coming from a background of academic research, this was just a like a very very new and very like human kind of territory for me. Um, so thank you for um, giving me that opportunity. And um, it also gave me like a good time to just really reflect on my time here. And a reoccurring theme was the idea of giving and taking. Um, the idea that as volunteers, as supporters, um, as partners, sorry, my dog is running back there. <laughs> The idea that we're giving our time and our sweat and tears and um, just the hours we put in, um, but also what we take or receive from um, these sort of things that we do. Uh, for me, it was just these really invaluable skills. Um, <laughs> uh, being a part of the community. Sorry, I laughed because my dog is my dog is being silly. Um, but I just. Um, received so much uh, just love and support from the community and the sense of place. And thank you for that. Thanks, Jeffrey. That was beautiful. Hi, puppy. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Jeffrey. And we are honored and grateful for all the work you've done for the Watershed Council. For sure. So, um, Thank you everybody for sticking with us and, and making it through these technical difficulties. Um, yeah. <laughs> so as, as we do every year, we, have, uh, we talk about what we've done in the past year. I have a year in review slideshow, which I'm going to do. But before I do that, one of the things um, that I hear an awful lot from partners, from just all sorts of people involved with the Watershed Council is how the heck are you all able to do so much? You must have a staff of about 20 people. Well, no, we actually have a staff of seven and it's my pleasure during the annual celebrations every year to introduce the staff, but I can't introduce them in person because of the forum that we have here. But one of the things that I can do is I can have this bring the staff up on the screen here one by one and have them um, introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about what their program is. And I'm, I've asked them each to keep their remarks to about 30 seconds because I know we've got a lot going on today. So let's start off with Noah Jenkins. which you'll need to unmute first. There we go. Got to click all the buttons, not just the ones that immediately jump out at me. Uh, so Noah Jenkins, uh, I'm the riparian program manager for the Watershed Council. Um, I will mark 15 years with the council come, uh, what, a week and a half from now or so. Uh, started as an AmeriCorps member and then um, stepped into this position. Uh, so I, in that capacity, I do a lot of our streamside revegetation work, uh, working largely with uh, private landowners in the watershed to um, get shade and improved habitat on the streams in uh, along Johnson Creek and its tributaries. Um, and I can absolutely confirm, as, uh, as Robin Cody said in his address, that restoration is absolutely reciprocal. I get so much good out of being outside and doing the work that I do. Um, and I hope I get 
that uh, that the watershed gets at least half as much out of it as I do. Um, so yeah, that's me. Thanks to all of the staff and volunteers for being awesome. Thank you very much, Noah. Um, let's go next to Kathy. Hi, everyone. I've been with the council about eight years. I'm the finance and operations coordinator. So basically anything to do with accounting. Um, I, I keep the wheels greased, so to speak, of all our operations and um, do the external audit every year. Also, I do support some of our events by trying to get the food, gathering the food and bringing the food, helping with uh, name badges, like for our Creek crew leaders. And um, also on the celebration, I do a lot of work around the silent auction. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much, Kathy. Um, Courtney, let's go to you next. I know you've already sort of introduced yourself, but why don't you tell us a little bit about your work? Sure. Hey, everyone. I'm Courtney Beckel. I'm the volunteer program manager. I've been with the council for four years and I manage the volunteer program, the Leech Back Five project and our equity implementation um, of, our, of our equity action plan. Thank you, Courtney. Um, let's go next to Chuck Lobdell. Hello, everybody. I'd like to um, thank you all for joining us tonight. And just uh, before I introduce what I do for the council, I just want to thank everybody for taking time out of their evening and just to press upon the point of how important uh, your involvement and your support is to the council and to our success. Um, this doesn't happen without you, without the volunteer hours, without the community involvement, and without the precious donations of uh, blood, sweat, and tears, and of course, uh, money donations as well. So I am the restoration project manager. Uh, my roles are in-stream restoration, primarily fish passage, but also uh, floodplain and fish enhancement projects. And then also uh, stormwater program, which we are in the process of, of launching, but um, stay tuned for more on that. So thank you very much. Enjoy the evening and uh, appreciate you being here. Thank you, Chuck. Um, let's next go to Tiffany Mencias. Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany Mencias. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator with Johnson Creek. I've been a part of the council for one year now. Really exciting to have been here the past year and seen everything going on and also the transition to virtual things too. So a lot of my role involves um, events. I'm doing things now virtually. So I'm running a virtual webinar series about community education. Um, we also do the Bilingual Nature Program, which I'm managing and Man, there's so many things. The community science program, we love doing surveys out in the community for beaver, salmon, dragonfly, and um, we're looking forward to bringing those back to folks with new kind of COVID regulations and being able to get that up and running again. So yeah, thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Thank you, Tiffany. And finally, um, Catherine. Hi, my name is Catherine and I'm uh, this year's AmeriCorps member and I will be serving as a um, riparian and outreach specialist working with NOAA on restoration projects um, as well as supporting outreach um, particularly by building partnerships with culturally specific organizations and I'll also be teaching environmental education within Portland schools um, so I'm really excited to be here it's actually just my first week in Portland so going to be a great year. All right. Thank you very much, Catherine. Um, that is our staff. Um, I, I hope uh, everybody has uh, really understands how few people we have, but I'm really proud of the staff and how much everybody has been able to accomplish in this past year. So now it's time for are the year in review slideshow. And um, I'm going to start that. This is an opportunity to talk about last year. So let me pull this up on the screen. And 
there we go. Year in review slideshow. So this is really our opportunity to, to talk to you about what we did in this past year, uh, 2019. Um, you know, just, I think it's important to, to, to mention that, um, you know, this, this current year is a tough year for everybody. I recognize that. Um, it's, but the way we work it, it's not till next year that we really talk about what happened this year, but this is really uh, 2019. So um, let's get started. Um, I want to bring up a staff photo and also we have several staff members, a uh, couple, few members here who were here last year but are not on the staff. In the upper right hand corner, that's Adrian Mote, who was our community outreach coordinator before Tiffany. Below that is Drew Donahue, who was our AmeriCorps member before Catherine. And then over second from the left in the photo is Jack Halsey, who was the AmeriCorps member before Drew. So one of the really incredible projects, you heard about this a little bit from Joanne Verlakis, who is accepting one of the Riffle Awards, is this project, which we call BAT5 at Leach Botanical Garden. So in 2011, uh, the city of Portland purchased uh, five acres of land adjacent to Leach Botanical Garden, but until recently it has been unmanaged. And what we did was we worked with several community groups, including Friends of Leach Gardens, um, Leach Garden Friends, excuse me, um, to do a true community project to restore the five acres and use it as a, a living laboratory for teaching job skills and teaching science, technology, engineering, and math to, to students. And we did this in partnership with several community organizations, the Blueprint Foundation, which uh, their mission is to provide the STEM, those STEM experiences to black and brown youth, uh, the African Youth Community Organization, which does the same and gets their youth uh, mainly Somali, but from some of the other um, immigrants from some of the other African countries as well. Um, and then Wisdom of the Elders, um, which provides job training to Native American adults and also does a lot of communication and video making to enrich the lives of Native people in this area and beyond. So this photo that you see here is a photo of some of the students um, David Douglas High School, I believe, who was one of the partners taking vegetation monitoring plots. We did um, decide very specifically to teach all the different skills that our staff would be doing if we were doing this project by ourselves. This next slide, um, this is part of the vegetation monitoring. One of the mentors and students from the Blueprint Foundation in the photo, and I think this is really important. One of the things that we are trying to do with this project, um, an equity focused project, is to transfer the knowledge to the young adults from these other organizations so that they will be able to teach the people, the students in their own community. What we heard loud and clear from our partners was we would like to teach our students with instructors who look like us from our community. And this is a really important part of what we're trying to do in this, this project. And all of the partners were involved from the very beginning. We make all the decisions together as a partnership. So it's not like the Watershed Council said, here's the project you wanna join. We all started together and we think that's a way to lead in the field of equity. So let's talk about our volunteer program. Um, Courtney leads that program. Um, does a fantastic job. Last year, we had another record year. I didn't think we would be able to continue to do that, but close to 3,000 volunteer signups and almost 8,500 volunteer hours. And the photo above, you see it's from the Johnson Creek cleanup, um, where we removed about five, a little over five tons of garbage from the creek. Now, I put together a little a group of photos here about the volunteer program because we do so much. 
If you start in the top left corner, you see a photo from the volunteer appreciation dinner. It's something we do every year, provide food to say thank you to our volunteers. Unfortunately, we're not able to do it this year, but we'll be back doing it next year. Top right hand corner, watershed wide event. Um, every year we have 10 sites around the watershed in March. We come together and plant trees, remove invasive species, working with such groups as Portland Parks and Recreation and Friends of Trees and many other groups as well. Um, I just could not resist this photo in the bottom right hand corner. Um, it is of the uh, t-shirts that we've done over the years for the cleanup event. And most recently, the last few years, we've had um, used this as an opportunity to help the local artist community where we've given a $200 uh, prize to the winning design for the t-shirts. And then over in the bottom left-hand corner, um, we have two of our interns. We have about two dozen interns every year and um, they really do a lot of work and help us out quite a bit. So the volunteer program is pretty big. One of the other big parts of the volunteer program is our community science program. And you can tell from Tiffany's expression here, everybody's having a great time, in this case, doing a beaver survey. Um, every year we do salmon surveys, dragonfly surveys, uh, some kind of an eco blitz. Last year it was amphibians, beaver surveys, steelhead and lamprey surveys last year. And then we had a brand new program up at Powell Butte working with Conservation Insight, a nonprofit in Portland Parks and Recreation to monitor prairie nesting bird populations. So a lot of different um, community science and we tend to have 200 plus people every year participating as volunteers. So next is our riparian program. And this might look like, uh, you might look at this photo and go, what the heck is going on? This is a crew from Wisdom of the Elders and we partner with Wisdom of the Elders quite a bit um, through the workforce training program. They have interns twice a year and they teach them um, skills in forestry and other natural resource areas. Um, and we work with them quite a few times a year and with their professional crew, um, which is made up of their intern graduates. This particular photo is of a willow uh, stake, willow and cottonwood stake harvesting project that we do every year. We do a lot of plantings and they're up here in the trees and on the ground. It's just a wonderful photo. And here are a couple of folks from the Wisdom of the Elders crew on a, a, another plant, planting project. You know, every year we plant between 20 to 25,000 trees. Um, it's been this way for many, many years and thank you uh, to Noah Jenkins, our riparian program manager for managing this. We actually have within this really seven small programs uh, because we work with and receive funding from the city of Gresham, city of Milwaukee, city of Portland, Clackamas Water Environment Services, Clackamas SWCD, East Multnomah SWCD, and the private uh, industrial company Freeway Lands too. So now it's time to move to our in-stream restoration work, which uh, you met Chuck earlier. He manages this uh, part of our program. This was a really big project we did last year. It was the biggest project we've done in many, many years. There, is a, uh, there was a pond that was about 10 inches deep during the summer. It was blocked and blocked off by a couple culverts, which also blocked fish passage was heating up the temperature. And we pulled out the two culverts. Here's uh, during the construction, you can see the excavator in the background uh, starting to pull out one of the culverts. We put large wood in the new channel to provide fish habitat. Um, and this photo right now was taken this past April. You can see the tremendous transformation in this project. Um, at the lower right hand part of the stream or screen where you're seeing all the rushes, that's where the downstream culvert used to be. And then way up in the, the middle 
in the back, you can see where the uh, upstream culvert used to be. And this was during a little bit higher flow. And you have, we have a, an off-channel pond that remains, that remains as wetland habitat, and that was by design. Big project, and it was, it's still going on. We're going to be doing, um, continuing our riparian work for another few years, but this was a huge project, and it it's uh, wonderful to be able to, to do that. Now, I just wanted to show this slide of a 2020 project. This is a dam removal we did on Kelly Creek. Mitchell Creek, the project you saw before, that's a tributary to Kelly. And when we took the dam out this year on Kelly Creek, which is downstream from Mitchell Creek, together those two projects opened up 3.8 miles of salmon and steelhead habitat within the Johnson Creek Basin. Now that might be nothing if you were doing something like that in a huge watershed, but in a somewhat urban watershed, this is really big, 3.8 miles. And this is a cold water tributary, which means the habitat value will be enhanced. Speaking of cold water tributaries, um, we did this next project. It was a fish passage project on the North Fork Johnson Creek under Highway 26, a partnership with the Oregon Department of Transportation. And the photo on the right, you will see uh, these are baffles that were installed. Baffles help to slow water down and spread it out at low flow so that the fish can actually move through. And at high flow, they lay down a little bit and they help to slow down high flow. So it really helps um, with fish passage. And then the photo on the right shows you the end of the culvert, the downstream end. Before we did this project, there was a big jump which was a problem for juvenile fish. But we did, we put in what's called an engineered riffle downstream and it backed the water up so that now fish will not only not have a barrier at the bottom, they can also swim somewhat into the culvert before they start to experience the, uh, the smaller flowing water. So this has been really tremendous. It's part of our, our North Pork Open Migration Project where with our other partners, including East Multnomah Soil and Water Conservation District on their property. Together, we've either uh, replaced, removed, or retrofitted six culverts. We have one project that's gonna happen next year. It's the seventh and final project. We're really, really excited because the entire North Fork will be passable. Um, so stay tuned, we'll, we'll have more information in the future. So another thing we do is we work with schools. Um, last year, we worked with uh, 15 schools and two other youth organizations, well over 1,000 students. Um, we don't want to compete with other organizations by going into classrooms and providing that kind of experience. What we do instead is we bring students out into the environment, um, teach them hands-on restoration, get them excited from an early age in, in stewardship. And uh, you see here on the left, Jack Halsey, our former um, AmeriCorps member, who is leading this particular event. Now, I absolutely had to put this photo in. Okay, once again, 2019, so this is pre-COVID, people are not wearing masks. 230 students from Rowe Middle School all out in the same day doing service learning with us. Uh, just incredible. Um, this is just an amazing thing. Thank you to Drew Donahue, our AmeriCorps member. This, is, uh, this was the biggest, I think, service learning we've ever done in the past. So I'm um, ending up our year in review slideshow. And we have here um, our board and staff. And I, I wanted to say an special thank you to our, our board and our staff, um, especially board right now. The board of directors puts in probably about a thousand volunteer hours combined every year. And just to let you know the scope of what they do, we have six board committees, fundraising, community inclusion, governance, land use, facilities, and executive committee. And the board, is really a huge part of what we do. Um, 
we work together, I think, really well. This is a photo taken this past winter um, of the board and staff at our annual retreat. Before I, before I end, I just want to say one thing. You've heard today about the work that we do as a watershed council in restoring Johnson Creek and creating community, building community. But we're not the only ones. A lot of partners that we work with are actively doing restoration work. And I just want to mention a few of those things that happened last year. The Metro government completed its next phase of restoration on Johnson Creek at the Brigman Creek Confluence, that's Habitat, following their fish passage work there. The Bureau of Environmental Services, City of Portland, completed a huge floodplain and habitat restoration on Main Stem Johnson Creek near Luther Road. Um, we'd like to say a special congratulations to the Clackamas Soil and Water Conservation District. They completed their new office and Although it wasn't in Johnson Creek, they were able to purchase some land, big piece of land and put a conservation easement on it, which was absolutely great, preserve the land in perpetuity. And on that note, the East Multnomah Soil and Water Conservation District did something similar. They put a big conservation easement on um, a farm that has riparian frontage on Johnson Creek, and that's gonna preserve that in perpetuity. And then our friends in the city of Milwaukee they launched their program to plant 20,000 trees as a way of combating climate change. So thank you. Thank you um, to all of our partners and donors and volunteers, staff and board. This has been a real community effort. So we're getting close to the very end here. Um, we have just a couple more things to do here. And what I would like to do right now is I would like to bring on our board chair, Timothy Crawley. And um, Tim has a special message for everyone. Great, thank you, Daniel. Um, I hope everyone can hear me okay. and. Uh, but yeah, thank you. First and foremost, thank you all for attending this year's uh, very special annual celebration. As you've heard, not only is it Johnson Creek Watershed Council's annual celebration, this year marks the 25th anniversary of Johnson Creek Watershed Council's existence as an organization. And I, for one, could not be prouder to be a member of this organization. This has been a difficult year all around. I, I don't really need to go into the list of this year's deficiencies, but. Uh, Johnson Creek Watershed Council has proven its durability and its adaptability, and it shines for its accomplishments during these very trying times. We continued to hold our annual cleanup event in August, implementing social distancing and sensitivity due to the COVID crisis. We saw dam removal in Kelly Creek, as was previously mentioned, uh, a large wood installation in Lower Johnson Creek, and we have seen the beginning of what should be a tremendous community program for habitat enhancement at Leach Botanical Gardens, which has brought us together with the Blueprint Foundation, Wisdom of the Elders, African Youth Community Organization, Leach Garden Friends, and David Douglas High School. The fact is we are expanding our reach into the watershed community like never before, despite all of the challenges of this past year. You know, the watershed is a very special place to me and my family. My children are five, three, and two years. We regularly enjoy the seclusion of the creek by Leach Botanical Gardens, the spring waters in and around East Moreland, the wildlife of bird, fish, beaver, and insect. We're blessed in its abundance. And it has more abundance now than any time in its recent past because of all of you. We count on you to keep us fueled to fight the good fight, to protect our most precious resources and advocate for that which would otherwise have no advocate. So we ask you to consider once again, making a donation to our organization right here, right now. It is imperative we feel deep within ourselves the importance this cause means to all of us in the watershed. So please, if you could, take the next few moments to donate to the council 
to the creek and to the watershed by going to jcwc.org slash donate or by texting the word donate to 503-386-9883. If you donate today, board member Dick Schubert and his wife Sue will match donations up to $2,500. So that's a great value right there. Again, that's jcwc.org slash donate or text the word donate to 503-386-9883. Thank you very much, Tim. Um, I'm gonna leave this on the screen for just another minute so you can take down that information. And then the final piece of tonight, we're going to share with you the winners of our silent auction. Um, we would love to hear any feedback from folks about the silent auction. We did this as an online uh, silent auction and we're really grateful for all the people who bid on the silent auction. So um, I've got that right now to share with you. And Robin, Cody, our keynote speaker, is going to be uh, reading off the silent auction winners. And Robin, I'm going to put the silent auction winners up on the screen now, if you would like to uh, read them off. Oh, that's great. Okay. Are you hearing me right now? Yes, absolutely. You're all set. Okay, so number one on the list, or maybe we should start with number 18. What do you, what do you say, Daniel? Uh, whatever you'd like. Okay, let's do number one. Uh, it's the Phelps Creek Vineyards. Uh, and the person who won the auction is Sherry Burles, possibly Burles. 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 Okay. Yep. Number two, Peekaboo Peekaboo Bears, uh, is the prize, and Kurt Germanson or Germanson is the winner. Number three, Calling All Thorns fans. Daniel Newberry is, is the winner. Nice going, Dan. You bet. <laughs> Shades of Yellow is number four, and that's Marianne Schmidt. Hello, Marianne. She's not there, but she's a friend. Okay, number five, Keeping It Safe on the Road is the auction thing, and it's Joe Keating who won that. Fabulous and Functional is number six, and it's Francis Knowles who got it. Pizza Lovers is number seven, and oh my gosh, Daniel Newberry. Ah, uh, you, you outed me. <laughs> Number eight, nature lovers, Mary Ann Schmidt. Hi, Mary Ann, if you're there. Sail the Columbia River. Now there's a gift. Jen Pepe, or Peep, P-E-P-E, -E, Jen. Congratulations. Also number 10, same person is the Willamette River sailing. Boy, that's great. We're getting people outside like that. Number 11, Coffee and Your Imagination was won by Lisa Jameson. Number 12, Grow Your Pollinator Garden won by Melanie Klein. Number 13, playing with your food. That sounds fun. Tim Crawley. Number 14, Woo's 
That is W O O apostrophe S, Woo's Big Eyes. And the winner there is Sterling Ash. Number 15, Love Your Farmer. And the winner of that one, too, is Joe Keating. Here's number 16. It's the River, Ricochet River Book Club uh, contribution. Uh, that's one by Richard Schubert. And I want to go back and say what the River Book, Ricochet River Book Club is. It's a stack of seven copies of Ricochet River uh, for the book club and the promise that the author, I, will join the discussion at the end if, <laughs> if I'm wanted. Okay, last one, number 18, Eating with a Twist. Desta Spence is the winner of that. And that's all that I have on the screen. Okay, thank you very much, Robin. Um, this concludes the end of the uh, annual celebration. For those of you who won um, these uh, silent auction prizes, um, thank you. And you will be getting an email. Um, we're setting up several specific times and days uh, to next week, but tomorrow um, from 4 to 6 p.m. if you want to come by the office. But you should be getting an email tonight if you haven't already got it about coming to pick it up. So thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. And next year, we hope we'll be back to uh, Memorial Day weekend before Memorial Day weekend and an in-person gathering. So thank you all. Thank you very much. Nice work, Daniel.